is a next generation blockchain based financial services. Uh, the presenter at this point is uh, Roberto Moncada. So Roberto Moncada is a junior researcher at Links Foundation in Turin and a PhD student at the University of Turin. His research interest is uh, on the economics of Welcome innovation presentation. with a sorry okay so the, uh, with a focus on the impact of blockchain technology on the economy from multiple perspectives. Thank you. My name is Roberto Moncada, and my colleagues and co-authors of this work are Enrico Ferro, Alfredo Favenza, and Pierluigi Vreni. The work title is Next Generation Blockchain-Based Financial Service within the third international workshop on future perspective of decentralized applications. The first perspective we analyzed is the difference between CFI and DeFi in the financial services provision and their consistency in this provision. The first, in the first place, we can see the traditional financial system that works through the, in the close interaction of governments, central banks, private banks, stock exchanges, and so forth, and that form the, the centralized finance, also called the CFI. The, uh, the traditional financial system is a centralized system since uh, the institutions that form this ecosystem just uh, have the, monopol the monopoly of the ledger uh, of uh, the data uh, of the users within this ecosystem with respect to the decentralized system in which the decentralized application, the also called the DAPS, built on blockchain infrastructures that compose the decentralized finance, which is called DeFi, uh, is characterized by a distribution nature of the ecosystem in which the ledger uh, is uh, accessible by, is also available uh, by all the users of the ecosystem uh, that in fact have access to uh, an exact copy of, of the ledger uh, of each blockchain and each and each platform. DeFi is a decentralized financial system composed of dApps developed upon permissionless or public permissioned blockchains that grant access to financial services through the execution of smart contracts provided that an internet connection is available. The first solution to CFI critical issues that DeFi uh, offer is the transparency. Indeed, all users have access to transaction data stored on the blockchains while still maintaining privacy, at least for public blockchains. The second one refers to the autonomy. Indeed, no trusted parties are needed. In fact, DeFi is based on non-custodial management of assets since users have the direct control of their wealth within the different apps. Thirdly, DeFi allow financial inclusion since it can foster financial inclusion providing the possibility to have access at least to essential financial services like transaction account and savings deposit. The fourth critical solution is the tradability. Indeed, no requirements to commit to entire high value investment at once is needed. In most cases, in fact, transactions on blockchains can involve portions of assets. The blockchain technology, in particular the aspect of this technology that are innovative and disruptive for the DeFi ecosystem, are essentially three. The first one is the ledger distributed nature uh, and in particular, the blockchain eliminates intermediaries by spreading control over the network and among the users. Secondly, we have the consensus protocol that defines the rules that legitimates the entry of new transactions into the ledger, and the cryptographic algorithm that designs uh, the methods to validate new data entries, maintaining security. Together, consensus protocol and cryptographic algorithm allows to determine many essential aspects of the blockchain infrastructure, in particular the degree of efficiency of the platform, the power consumption of the platform, and the digital scarcity. The last one, 
specifically determine the solution for the double spending problem. Indeed, instead of the situation of, of the internet condition in which information is abundant and can be replicated at will since the cost of replication is very low, in the, in the case of asset within the blockchain context, it is not possible to recreate, so to double the assets at will, but uh, the consensus protocol together with the cryptographic algorithm create digital scarcity. For the DeFi ecosystem to exist, it is necessary a, a circulating medium of exchange that we generally call currency in the traditional system, while in the context of DeFi we call cryptocurrency. If on the one hand, in the case of the fiat money, uh, the money is under the, the monopolistic control of, of central banks, cryptocurrencies represent a form of unregulated and programmable digital money that is consensually accepted by the community members of the blockchain. New transactions, then, are performed through the implementation of a consensus algorithm, and so the uh, main aspects, the two main aspects upon which the DeFi bases its functioning are the community and the algorithm. DeFi also falls within the paradigmatic shift from economics to tokenomics. If on the one hand we have economics, which innovation proceeds by introducing a change in the context of set rules and by observing how such a relatively rigid framework reacts to the change, in the context of tokenomics, innovation is put forward by designing the rules governing the playground in a way that the stakeholder's behavior aligns with the goal pursued. So, in the first case, in the case of economics, we have an innovation based on a predictive basis. In the case of tokenomics, innovation carry on, carries on on a design basis. The shift from the passive observation of the ecosystem reaction to a change to the active design of the ecosystem consistent laws aims at reaching at reach the desired outcome. So DeFi, DeFi falls within tokenomics by definition since the rules uh, on the basis of each DApps of each platform are designed uh, before the creation, before the application of the uh, of the financial services, in order to reach, in order to pursue the goal, uh, the the goal defined uh, before. We uh, defined an analysis based on eight blockchain infrastructures. Uh, of the DeFi ecosystem, the choice, uh, the choice of the eight blockchain infrastructures aim to present the technical scenarios within within which the DeFi ecosystem has proliferated in the last years. The selection criteria of the blockchains are essentially three. The first one is the market capitalization, so the level of capitalization of the blockchain's native cryptocurrencies. The second one is the nature of the platform, in particular the permissionless and public permissioned nature of platforms. And thirdly, the predisposition of these platforms towards financially innovative objectives. This first table shows the uh, eight blockchains selected, and in particular Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tron, Stellar, EOS, Tezos, NEO and Cardano, uh, with respect to nine main variables that, all, that, as I told before, present the technical scenarios of these eight blockchains in order to understand the technical characteristics of these platforms. First of all, we have the accessibility. So, the, the permissionless and the public permissioned blockchain. In fact, you can observe that the eight blockchain are or permissionless or, per, or public permissioned. Only Cardano is an exception because it presents both a permissionless and a permissioned governance layer uh, within its uh, infrastructure. 
The consensus mechanism is the second variable, and we can observe different mechanisms uh, like proof of work, proof of stake, delegated proof of stakes, and other uh, specific and special uh, consensus mechanism uh, that derive generally from proof of stake of, of the or delegated proof of stake, like for example the liquidity proof of stake of Tezos. Then we have the cryptocurrency issue method, and in general it differentiates between mining and pre mined activities. Cryptocurrency symbol, the cryptocurrency total supply. The blockchain uses that defines the main activities carried out within the eight blockchains. The target audience that does not um, preclude the uh, participation of other uh, players, like for example the public sector, so institutions, uh, other, uh, other than individuals and businesses. The market capitalization of the native uh, cryptocurrency uh, of the uh, different platforms and the creation here of the infrastructures. The DeFi ecosystem is based, uh, the DeFi ecosystem that we analyzed and, and, and we structured in this paper uh, is based on the eight blockchains presented in the previous slide and on a financial services categorization based on five categories of financial services. The first category uh, is uh, the borrowing and lending category, where users have access to peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms, where borrowers can obtain funds over collateralizing a loan by blocking their digital assets. The exchanges category, in which users can exchange tokens, not only for utility reasons, but also to take advantage of rising and decreasing prices. We have also deposit and asset management category, in which users can access non-custodial dApps to manage funds and digital assets, monitoring their investment directly, so having access to non-custodial realities in which there is no need to, for third-party interventions or intermediation. The derivatives category, in which users can invest in synthetic tokens whose value is anchored to the underlying asset price through the apps that allow tokenizing every kind of asset that can be also asset that operates online or offline. And the stablecoin issuance uh, category, uh, where users can exploit the issuance of tokens characterized by minimal fluctuation rates that are generally fiat-baked or crypto-baked. And so we are here in the uh, DeFi ecosystem analysis that we structured in order to uh, map the ecosystem of the uh, financial services provision within the decentralized finance. So we can observe an ecosystem that go across that goes across the eight blockchains uh, analyzed and the five uh, financial services categories uh, presented before. We can observe that uh, other than the Ethereum blockchain, it is the first mover in this, uh, uh, in, in this context, in this field. Uh, there are also other players within the DeFi um, environment that are uh, expanding their network, uh, not only in terms of the number of dApps, but also in terms of financial services, uh, like for example, EOS and, and, and Tezos. And we can observe that, that the environment is very rich, uh, also in terms of uh, services offered. Indeed, uh, we, can, uh, we can also distinguish between uh, different, uh, different apps and different services, even if most of these apps offer more than, uh, than one financial services. In fact, uh, even if you can observe these apps within uh, a specific a specific um, financial service category, um, it is possible and it uh, often happens that they also operate in um, other contexts uh, and offer other type of financial services. The considerations and the lessons learned 
uh, that comes from the defined ecosystem analysis presented in the table in the table of the previous slide are uh, mainly three. The first one deals with the Bitcoin blockchain that among, uh, among the platforms analyzed is the only one that does not allow the execution of smart contracts and the deployment of dApps. However, given the Bitcoin's impact in terms of network effects, uh, which caused its considerable appreciation since 2012, it represents one of the DeFi ecosystem cornerstone. Besides, the results show a path dependency linked to the first mover advantage of the Ethereum blockchain. Indeed, Ethereum has generated strong network effects, and as in the case of the Bitcoin blockchain, being the first blockchain to implement smart contracts and develop dApps. However, despite the relative inefficiency, uh, inefficiencies compared to other platforms, uh, the positive feedback loops generated by the increasing dimension of the environment in terms of, uh, of the number of dApps and the financial services offered, uh, Ethereum have attra has attracted more attention by users and developers. But more recent infrastructures, like also EOS and Tezos blockchains, have started to expand their network in terms of uh, dApps and financial services offered, uh, deriving, the, uh, deriving two main effects uh, from the emergence of other blockchains within the DeFi environment. So the expansion of this environment can bring to two main uh, consequences. The first one is the attraction of users of other platforms, so within the DeFi environment, but also the contraction of the CeFi network uh, for the advantage of the DeFi uh, environment. In this slide, we can observe the DeFi map, the DeFi map that comes from the uh, DeFi ecosystem analysis. In fact, we can observe the expansion of the DeFi ecosystem across the eight blockchain and the, the five financial services ecosystem. And so whenever we can observe a box that is colored with a specific degree of gray, we, can, we know that there will exist at least one app that offer that specific financial services, uh, financial service in that specific platform. And so it summarized the information collected during the analysis, presenting also the actual DeFi ecosystem since the first execution of smart contracts in 2014. So the conclusions of this work uh, made in this paper uh, are essentially three also in this case. And the, and the first one deals with the blockchain, uh, the blockchain technology application in the financial sector as brought to the creation of that of DAP's ecosystem able to reproduce standard financial services and also to go a step further, proposing innovative solutions for this industry's evolution. The result presented during this uh, in, in this paper describe a rapidly changing ecosystem actually driven by the Ethereum blockchain in terms of uh, the dimension of its environment, but followed also by prominent projects with broad potential in terms of efficiency and also ecosystem prosperity. This exploratory study in particular represents an initial step within the research field that reads the transition from centralized to, to decentralized system. And further analysis also will focus on a multiple perspective study with the aim to define which degree of complementarity between centralization and decentralization can maximize their respective strengths and minimize the weaknesses. So, subsequent work will enhance comprehension about the future perspective of DeFi, also delineating uh, the profile of potential future successful actors in the next generation financial industry. This work and this research activity 
is part of an extensive and ongoing effort to understand and map the innovation potential of distributed ledger technologies carried out by Over the Block, that is a permanent observatory on blockchain technology powered by Links Foundation. So thank you for your attention. And so if you have any question, I will be glad to answer. Okay, so thanks for the presentation. Uh, so I have uh, one question from uh, Slack for uh, Roberto. So uh, the question is, uh, what steps should the FI take to align uh, with existing regulation? For example, existing regulation states that uh, corporations must prove that uh, they do not uh, business with certain uh, uh, that certain companies that are uh, usually included in a blacklist country, the countries. This become uh, nearly impossible when uh, transacting in a public permissions, permissionless blockchain. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, it's very, uh, it's a very interesting field, this, uh, this part of DeFi, of DeFi, in particular the uh, possibility of DeFi to approach the regulation of the centralized institutions and centralized financial system. Um, we have to consider that in particular when we talk about permissionless and public permission uh, realities, uh, there is not yet a, a uh, uh, the possibility to have uh, a comparison between the two ecosystems. In fact, uh, in the paper, uh, we explain that in this moment we can talk about complementarity between the two ecosystems. Uh, and the first point of complementarity is, is in fact, the, uh, the regulation aspect. Uh, which, uh, which steps should the FI take? Uh, it's not too easy to. to uh, to forecast, uh, we could say that uh, uh, in this case, the first step is just to align with the regulations within countries that just uh, uh, want to align in, this, uh, in, in these terms. For example, there is a Luxembourg uh, country that uh, uh, is, take, uh, is taking a very important steps in this, in this way. Also, obviously, the United States uh, are approaching new uh, new regulations in this uh, in the ecosystem of uh, uh, decentralized finance and blockchain in general. So I think that the, in some terms we will have uh, some connection between within between the two ecosystems, but uh, the regulation will uh, always uh, create some boundaries uh, to the to the decentralized ecosystem, obviously. So limiting the uh, the possibilities to interact. Uh, uh, between the two. The important thing is that uh, uh, um, even if there, is, uh, there will be always this, uh, this type of, uh, uh, of limitations, uh, the two ecosystems just go straight for their way. So there is a complementarity between, between the two ecosystems allowing different type of, uh, of context uh, to carry on different type of services and businesses in general. Okay, and uh, I have uh, one uh, general question uh, to Roberto uh, because uh, I read the paper, but uh, I didn't see any reference, uh, for example, to uh, other blockchains, for example, like Algorand. I don't know if you studied also Algorand and uh, I don't know if you think that uh, there is uh, some. Uh, there will be some impact in uh, some role that Algorand will play in uh, the Fi scenario. No, I I didn't um, I didn't study. We didn't study the Algorand blockchain until now. Consider that this is the first uh, our first uh, effort in terms of uh, DeFi study, and in fact we focused on. Uh, the uh, very prominent blockchains in this this field, um, focusing also on the blockchains that uh, uh, in, in which uh, there were and there are uh, more dApps in terms of financial services, obviously. Uh, so we, ha we we are expanding this work. We are expanding also the ecosystem studied. Uh, so Algorand is uh, 
uh, an optimal point to start uh, uh, next work in this uh, in this uh, research activity. Okay, last question from uh, uh, from Fadi. Uh, so Fadi uh, wrote, uh, as I understand, the liquid Bitcoin federated and pegged side chain allows the execution of simple smart contract, for example, lending. Bitcoin, Bitcoin hasn't been considered considered as a de DeFi platform because the liquid platform is only on layer two. Okay. Um, I and, uh, and, I and the second part, just just to conclude, okay. the second part is: uh, Are there in general some downsides in using layer two solution for DeFi? Okay. Uh, in this case. Uh, Frankly, we didn't go uh, very through this uh, uh, this part of the DeFi until now. Uh, what I can say is that uh, uh, Bitcoin, uh, in this moment, we, we just uh, consider the Bitcoin blockchain as the uh, as the problem, as the, the the most important one. So the, the first layer of uh, of Bitcoin, uh, just because from Bitcoin uh, I started. Uh, a lot of, uh, of forks, so we, we know that there are a lot of, uh, of Bitcoin blockchain with different names and different and different layer of, uh, of governance. But in this case, as I as I told before, uh, we uh, we consider just the, the first uh, the eight most important blockchains in order to map the ecosystem of DeFi uh, and to uh, just to take into consideration the largest possible number of users. That just uh, take advantage of uh, financial services provided within uh, within decentralized finance. Okay, okay. can I elaborate a bit further on this? So I think the study is quite important and interesting, and uh, maybe a bit preliminary at this stage uh, as recognized. But I, I would uh, uh, kind of ask and suggest a couple of questions about the technical aspects. So in my opinion, there should be a bit uh, more detail on, on the technology used. For instance, uh, I find a bit difficult to consider at the same level of decentralization projects like Tezos, uh, Stellar, EOS, and Bitcoin. For instance, uh, in, uh, in Stellar, the way in which you reach consensus kind of, of Imply that there there is a a, a, a number of uh, let's call them super nodes that everyone has to listen to, and it, it is not clear how these super nodes are defined. Probably that they are not decentralized at all. The the same holds for EOS with, with the twenty one uh, verifier or validators or whatever they are called. So. And this is completely different from instance from, from uh, uh, examples like Tezos or Algorand or, or whatever. So a bit more of, of uh, technical detail, detail, I think, is needed if you are observing the, the scenario of decentralized uh, finance. And, and uh, following up uh, on um, on this and on the previous question. Uh, I would be a bit more careful to say that uh, there are no smart contracts on uh, even layer one of Bitcoin, in the sense that you can build things on top of the single transactions of Bitcoin. You can build uh, uh, lotteries, you can build, uh, there are many examples of things that can be implemented, uh, even uh, if there is no a, a native um, smart contract programming language. So this is a kind of, a, of a, a question if you want to comment or, or maybe suggestion uh, and I'm happy to take this offline if you are interested. Thank okay. you. So, uh, th thank you too for these uh, for these suggestions and questions. So it was uh, very, there were very interesting suggestions in this, uh, in this speech in particular uh, the part of decentralization. We uh, we are uh, searching, we are studying in order to understand uh, uh, just a scale or just a, um, a way to uh, understand the degree of decentralization of, uh, uh, of blockchains. And in particular, we didn't find until now uh, other study 
uh, that allow to uh, create a, 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 a just a, 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 um, a degree of decentralization, so a scale of decentralization, put in numbers. Uh, therefore, this this is a very interesting part of this study because uh, uh, we want to apply this type of analysis in uh, within the DeFi ecosystem in order to understand which type of platforms have uh, has more uh, possibility to expand in the future. Also, with respect to the decentralization degree, uh, you are all uh, um, obviously right in the sense that uh, in the eight blockchains that we analyze there is a different there are different degree uh, degrees of decentralization so it, it is obvious that this aspect plays a role in the determination of the defi ecosystem and its uh, expansion in the future this, this was not part of uh, the the aim of this work that uh, that that just uh, uh, that, that is just limited to the uh, to the mapping of the the fine ecosystem, um, but is absolutely uh, part of the future uh, our future proposal for for research activity, um, and also the fact about the the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, in particular, uh, we focused on DApps, so uh, we focused on uh, applications. That, a, that enable the, the execution of financial services. The, uh, we didn't forget the uh, possibility to execute uh, smart contracts, even if they are not uh, directly uh, built on, uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, but we just uh, focused on another, uh, another type of, uh, of, of financial services and, uh, and type of uh, applications. Okay, uh, so thanks to Roberto. So I forgot to clap my hands uh, in the last uh, talk. Thank you. <laughs> okay, and uh, so we can move to the next uh, paper. Hello, everybody. I'm Bianca Trovo. Okay, just um, to... perfect. Thank you. So the next paper is entitled the ANS Review, a protocol for open uh, anonymous peer reviews. Uh, the presentation, uh, uh, the authors are Nazareno Massari, that is a blockchain engineer uh, based in London, and uh, Bianca Trovò, that is uh, a PhD candidate in cognitive computational neuroscience in the doctoral school program at uh, Sorbonne University and uh, Neurospin CAA Paris Seclay. Uh, she recently uh, started doing uh, also parallel research on blockchain uh, solutions. Uh, last sentence, uh, this, this project was born and won the first place uh, at the recent, uh, recent uh, at Turin uh, Hackathon and uh, now is taking part in the first kernel G Gitcoin incubator that is a selective program for the development of Web3 products. We can start the presentation. A PhD student in cognitive neuroscience at uh, Sorbonne University, Paris, France. I'm uh, Nazareno, blockchain engineer. And we are going to present and review a protocol for open anonymous peer reviews. Our presentation is divided into three parts. Uh, first, we're going to state uh, the problem and uh, provide uh, a solution uh, for the blockchain system. And then we are going to introduce uh, the implementation of Ants Review. And finally, we are going to have a final discussion. As you may know, uh, the peer review process is an essential and necessary process for, process for assessing the quality and uh, validate papers before publication. And here, for example, we report results from a qualitative survey that we run online uh, among researchers from PhD students level to principal investigators. And as you can see, uh, one of the most uh, recurrent uh, word uh, for the definition of peer review is quality, uh, validity, uh, the fact that the peer review is interpreted as uh, a step that ensures uh, a community standard and um, it's a necessary process. 
for uh, high scientific quality. However, uh, the peer review, the current peer review uh, system presents a lot of uh, flaws. In particular, the system is very slow um, and this uh, um, impacts um, scientific dissemination. And we think the main reason for that is the fact that there are no proper incentives in, uh, in, fo in the form of uh, a lack of external recognition uh, from the scientific community itself. Also, there are no enough trained reviewers uh, for all the amount of manuscripts that need to be reviewed. And this because the process is uh, top down and uh, it's a selective, we can say elective process um, based uh, on the editor's choice. Another major problem is uh, uh, concerns uh, major vulnerabilities in the system that can compromise the review's quality, such as, and it has already been reported, uh, fraud, misconduct, and social cognitive biases from the reviewers towards the authors. And therefore, uh, the system needs to be uh, validated itself. So reviewers uh, must be reviewed. Uh, some solutions has been, have been proposed to speed up the process and improve it. But so far, for example, in terms of uh, incentives uh, that have been introduced by uh, scientific uh, journals, uh, only the performance is uh, assessed and only in terms of the quantity of the reviews that are made and not the quality. Another proposal to, um, to speed up the process come from journals, consortia, and uh, journal independent companies that allow uh, authors to have portable peer reviews. Uh, so reviews that are transferable across journals that uh, adhere to this uh, consortia. And increased control um, to a uh, peer review system have been recently adopted, the double blind peer review that protects the author's identity, but it still doesn't solve the problem of the back, black box uh, process of peer review, which is not accessible to the scientific community. And uh, open reports in which, uh, make, uh, which makes reviewers more accountable because we know their identity and they have to sign the reviews but also more exposed uh, to forms of retaliation. Finally, and this is less common, uh, some services offer reviews of uh, re reviews themselves. We think that uh, blockchain uh, could be a um, viable alternative uh, due to the intrinsic characteristics uh, of uh, decentralization and proof of existence and the fact that it allows to adopt uh, incentives in the form of token economics. Indeed, in a scientific conversation, um, recently, for example, we cite the think uh, uh, tank based in Berlin called the Blockchain for Science. Um, it has been um, appointed that, that uh, blockchain uh, could be the solution that uh, can bring the scientific uh, research towards open access, open data, and re reproducibility. Here with Ant Review, we propose uh, a model in which peer reviews are a, com in, are a community driven activity. Therefore, instead of having a top down process uh, where editors select. Uh, the reviewers, uh, the process is bottom up, bottom up and researchers seek for the paper to review. Therefore, the system is much faster and more transparent and inclusive. Here we can see the difference between a centralized review system and a decentralized one, which is the one we propose. In the centralized system, the authors submit their manuscript to the journal's editors. Uh, which handled the manuscript to the appointed reviewers. And in this system, uh, 
the trust is in the hand of the journals which guarantee uh, that the process is uh, um, not uh, corrupted. However, in, uh, in a decentralized systems, there is no need for a third party and the authors can handle their manuscript to the scientific community itself, which is made of contributors. And contributors uh, volunteer to be either reviewers or to validate the reviews. Moreover, uh, we intend uh, peer, in our model, we intend peer reviews as a public good. Uh, this because uh, reviews themselves are a service that, are, that is provided to the scientific community and therefore uh, needs to be retributed. An incentive can happen in the form of tokens. The tokens uh, indeed reflect uh, both the symbolic and the material recognition for the work done by the researchers and therefore uh, can uh, um, shape the author's level uh, matrix uh, by measuring the impact factor of a researchers, not just uh, based on the citations, but also on other activities such as uh, peer reviewing. And therefore, the system can act as a reputation builder. Here again uh, is a comparison between the current system and the system that we are proposing. In the current system, the value flows only from the authors towards the journals, and, but only the journals actually get uh, material recognition uh, for their work. In fact, uh, only, in fact, the authors must pay a very high publication fee. However, neither authors or reviewers are actually retributed for their work. In our system instead, everyone contributes to the value flow, uh, both in a symbolic way and in a material way. So all the members of the system can be retributed with tokens. Finally, we want uh, peer reviews to be open, accountable, but uh, anonymous. This means that you want to combine the two uh, good aspects of the most recent models of peer reviews, which are the double blind uh, approach and the open report uh, approach. And our idea is to do this, uh, making the platforms act like a version control system through cryptographic hashing and also uh, by protecting the privacy of the transactions between the agents with the zero knowledge proof. In this way, we can maintain the anonymity of the members in the community, but uh, making everyone accountable for their contributions. Here we compare the current system again um, and the answer review system. In the current system, uh, which uh, usually adopts the single blind review uh, approach. Um, the review's identity is masked to the authors. Uh, and all the process that happens before the publication is uh, closed to the scientific community. Another option is the double blind uh, approach that we mentioned, where also authors are masked to, to reviewers. And the other one is the open reports. In any case, the manuscripts are usually not uh, open to the scientific community. In the answer review system instead, everything is available to scientific validation even before publication. Uh, but all the members of the community are anonymous. Um, however, uh, their contributions are trackable through IPFS that uses uh, cryptographic ashes. So, uh, we, uh, for the uh, current iteration, we implemented uh, a fully uh, bounty-like uh, system. Um, 
So um, the main smart contract ends review and all, all the logic uh, uh, we need, um, as well as um, uh, ANS review roles that introduce uh, two roles, issuer and peer reviewer, by leveraging an open Zeppelin uh, access control module uh, that is used for uh, safe contract development. And uh, as uh, we can see, an agent uh, in the protocol uh, Alice, uh, an author, can issue an end review by uploading uh, the paper on IPFS um, that will that the contract will timestamp on Ethereum blockchain, um, and also it will specify other issuer, other authors, as well as an approver and a deadline. And uh, Bob, the reviewer, can fulfill a specific end review by uploading uh, the file uh, of the peer review on uh, IPFS, uh, submitting before the deadline, and he will receive is, is if the peer review will be accepted, uh, an amount of events as reward. Uh, regarding tokenomics, uh, we introduced a few um, tokens in the, system, in the protocol, a native token called ENS that is used uh, to reward peer reviewers uh, for peer reviews and as well as uh, ZK ENS that is a wrapper into Aztec protocol to allow private transaction between agents. And also uh, we are considering to add DeFi integration like Dai, Chai, and other as well. Um, in detail, uh, as you can see, um, Alice um, can issue an entry view. An entry view is uh, a particular object that is between a bounty and a pool. And uh, because he has its own balance, and everybody uh, from the community can contribute by sending ants. And uh, the process also uh, allow um, the community to validate peer reviews and establish a rank of the best peer reviews, uh, as we can see. Also, the privacy is um, uh, achieved uh, by leveraging on Aztec protocol um, by wrapping the native token into into the protocol, as well as also a pseudo anonymity granted by Ethereum addresses. Uh, it's pseudo because it can be subjected to data mining and uh, to, uh, to get the identity of um, the agent. But regarding Aztec, it allows a fully uh, anonymous uh, interaction. And this is achieved by leveraging on Aztec cryptographic engine that uses homomorphic encryption as well as zero knowledge proof, uh, specifically ZK Snarks and in the future Blanc, that allows any asset, any ERC20 token to be wrapped into the system and transferred by a special transaction called joint split, uh, by which uh, the agent in the system, Alice and Bob, are um, uh, anonymous, as well as uh, the transfer uh, amount, um, in this case, uh, 75 CK die. Um, now I'll show you a quick uh, demo of the current. So this is the user interface. Uh, we can claim uh, uh, 10. Uh, um, uh, ends. So we is pending. Okay, and we got uh, ten ends. Now we can issue. Um, an ant review by choosing uh, the paper to upload as well as the requirements and the approver that can be selected
as well as uh, issuers. We can add uh, another issuer as well, and we can specify a deadline. And confirm. And is issued. We can see on either scan uh, the event log and review issued. Now we can see on the explorer the last one. It's our end review. We can uh, an example. We can uh, contribute. So like let's say one ends. Confirm. And yeah. so we need two transactions, one to approve the amount and the other to contribute. that we can check on either scan and it worked uh, now um, everybody uh, peer reviewer so we need to change the accounts can uh, uh, fulfill the ant review uh, we can specify um, a file, a peer review in this uh, case, and we can uh, submit the peer review. And we can check on either scan. That and review is fulfilled. Um, uh, future developments, uh, uh, we will uh, considering adding uh, DeFi services by leveraging on uh, uh, the duration of a peer review that usually is six months uh, or more. And this allow, for example, to use DeFi services like MakerDAO or Compound to accrue interest and by um, uh, incentivize uh, the agent, the hunters, uh, member of the community to con contribute to get back a wrapper of ends representing the accrued interest called height. And also, um, we are considering to extend um, the protocol to a DAO, a decentralized autonomous organization, by using ANTS as a governance token. Uh, by which uh, agent of the system, the, the community, can uh, upvote, downvote peer reviews. And by doing that, they validate uh, the best peer reviews. And based on that, they will get paid. Um, Finally, um, if uh, the peer review process becomes community-driven, 
uh, we might require a universal standard for peer reviews. And we consider also some options that have been introduced recently, for example, AI assistant for uh, at least the formal parts of the peer review that could be speed up. Thanks for your attention. And we are happy to receive questions and comments. Okay, uh, so we have uh, some que uh, two questions on uh, Slack channel. The first question is related to the use of ZK proofs. In particular, Fabi is asking uh, if uh, you can give uh, more detail about it, in particular, which is the statement parties that uh, ZK proof uh, uh, is used to prove. Sure, uh, good question. Um, so we are using uh, ZK proof um, to allow private transaction um, in the system. And this is um, particularly useful because allow a verifier to, um, uh, to prove that a transaction has been done without revealing uh, the detail of the transaction. So it's very uh, powerful tool and um, it allows to uh, like um, cover uh, the identity of uh, the agents as well as the amount being transferred. But at the same time, you can prove that it happened uh, and a verifier can uh, verify that. Okay, but do you have, um, you can see some uh, more specific uh, to the use of uh, ZK proof in your approach uh, or? Uh... So in, in the, um, we are um, still um, uh, developing that, um, that side because uh, currently um, uh, Aztec protocol uh, is releasing uh, the new version. And, um, but basically uh, it, it has a, a library um, um, access cryptographic engine on, on Ethereum that allow you to write a smart contract to wrap uh, an ERC20 token and to interact uh, with this uh, engine on Ethereum to um, basically abstract um, and 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 um, and allow confidential uh, uh, transactions. So and they currently are working on uh, um, a new uh, zero knowledge proof uh, uh, algorithm as uh, called Plonk that will allow to improve scalability. So yeah, I hope I answered the question. Okay, thank you, Nazareno. We have another question. Yeah. Maybe if I can add on the previous question on the specific case of answer review, for example, uh, our interest uh, is that uh, the parties, I mean, the agents in the platform cannot know in advance what are the values in the transaction, right? Because if you see that, for example, a specific uh, manuscript has been uh, um, staked a certain amount of ants, then people might want to, val to validate a specific peer review instead of another because of the value that uh, this, the economic value that is has on the system, right? And uh, with the joint uh, split uh, proof that is uh, allowed by Aztec protocol, we can, uh, we can have this uh, cryptographic system for which you know that the transaction is valid, but you don't know how much people are voting uh, for, a, for a specific review instead of another. Because uh, finally, our idea is to have a sort of ranking system in which, for example, you have uh, four reviewers and then, uh, uh, or maybe 10, let's say more, because uh, people will select the best one and the contributors in the platform are going to choose the ones that are the good uh, reviews based also on the, uh, and this is related to the next question, I guess, uh, because um, the idea is to have a system that actually prevents uh, uh, people who are not uh, competent in a way uh, to uh, have their peer review validated in the sense that maybe uh, some users might just want to game the system to get the reward. So they might uh, put uh, random peer reviews, right? 
And, and with this, uh, we, we want to ensure that it's not just about the quantity of reviews, but also about the quality. Yeah, thanks, Bianca. Uh, yes, you mentioned the following question that uh, just for the audience that uh, doesn't have uh, maybe the, the Slack channel uh, in front of, of it. So uh, the question is related to identities. So how the how the identities created and managed on end review? Because, for example, as uh, Tom suggests, if an identity is anonymous, uh, a reviewer can uh, also can also um, uh, have a low reputational score and uh, they can he can uh, recover just uh, from simply creating a new identity on the system. Yeah, so the system in theory is resistant to civil attack. So the idea is that uh, since we have uh, the cryptographic hashing, we can always uh, track who is the reviewer. You cannot have uh, two accounts. So it's not possible that someone enters the system, make a second account to be uh, validating the same reviewer twice. And specifically to filter uh, the agents on the platform, we are considering several options. One of these is uh, um, Oracle, and maybe Nazareno can talk about that. Sure. So um, this kind of system can be subjected to this kind of attacks, but uh, if we filter um, uh, at the top um, uh, with oracles um, that allows to um, check some uh, um, background on 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 the um, the issuer, the author, this allow the system. Uh, to uh, identify um, the agent uh, in question and to avoid uh, kind of duplicates or uh, events in which uh, there are more agents that uh, are using different accounts. Okay, uh, so Andrea. Yes, uh, I think, uh, thank you for the presentation. It's a very nice idea, very well thought, but I think that, that there are a couple of points that needs more uh, further elaboration. I, I, I missed something probably. So it's not clear to me how the evaluation phase works. So once you have this reviewed, are you imagining that there, there will be someone in charge of accepting the paper or, and, and move it from uh, the status of submitted to published somehow or, or how, how would it work and uh, I had the same uh, question about the, the civil attack because even if you use an oracle there is a centralization points that enables the, the reviewers and um, the last point the last two points are everything seems to be public before publication so before reaching a state of uh, say recognition by the community and I'm not sure this is very much wanted by, by researchers because if something is in a liquid state where it's public but not published, it, it's a kind of a risk for, for, for uh, your, your, say, intellectual property. And finally, if you could say something more about how the revenue is generated, who is paying for what? Thank you. All right, uh, maybe we can start from the latest one and then go backwards. Um, so regarding the business model, uh, this is still in development, um, but uh, in, in fact, uh, maybe you have noticed that there are some differences between the paper and the presentation because we have been uh, further developing Ants Review in a, we are still currently developing Ants Review in an incubator, which is the kernel. Um, and uh, our idea is that uh, the contributors in the platform are staking uh, ants, so they are staking the, the token, and maybe uh, Nazareno can uh, explain some details yeah, about so, it. Yeah, so um, currently for the business model, we are considering a contribution fee, so when uh, you uh, contribute to an ant review by sending uh, some token that can be ants uh, in the current iteration or in the future uh, die, for example, uh, we take 1% uh, contribution fee. So this is um, for now um, a business model that we propose. 
And regarding the second latest question about uh, the complete open access in process, um, I, I, we personally didn't see it as a problem. Um, I have been running some user uh, research uh, on uh, researchers between uh, PhD students level to PIs. Um, and these uh, qualitative questionnaires um, about the peer review process, this has never been uh, put as a, a particular issue. Uh, also, I'm thinking of some recent models, uh, for example, proposed by the journal uh, F1000 research, in which the peer review process is actually post hoc. So basically, your paper, uh, which is in the draft version, is already accepted for publication, so it's published. And then you select the peer reviewers and the peer review process is dynamic. So over years, you will receive many uh, reviews and you will see all the reviews. Um, in a sense, it could be like uh, a version for manuscript writing of uh, uh, GitHub for codes. So people are always seeing which are the contributions that are made. And since the system is made with this uh, sort of version control that is ensured by IPFS, by the cryptographic hashing, uh, there is always accountability. So there wouldn't be a problem such uh, you mentioned as a, um, uh, auto recognition, intellectual property, because you would always know who had this idea first. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't know if this uh, completely answer uh, your question. Uh, it, we should imagine that in the system, you don't know the names of the authors, but you know who they are based on the cryptographic hash. So um, yeah. Yeah, re uh, regarding uh, the civil attack uh, that was mentioned before. So currently, uh, one uh, someone, a peer reviewer, or an issuer sign in in the system, uh, you need to get, uh, uh, you need to be granted a role, uh, issuer and peer reviewer. And as, as Bianca was saying, this could be done by using an Oracle to filter um, uh, bad agents or other uh, solution as well to avoid the civil attack. And also regarding the validation of peer reviews, uh, this is um, in discussion and uh, uh, it's part of future developments. Um, an idea would be to use uh, an ERC-20 token with uh, um, uh, disabling the mind uh, um, function and just use the balance as well as the transfer. Uh, there is already a use case uh, in status called discover. Uh, that is be used to upvote, downvote uh, dApps on the browser. And we want to uh, develop further by integrating this kind of solution that it's already, um, uh, it's already um, uh, civil attack uh, safe. And uh, because there is a cap on, on the supply, total supply and other, um, uh, another way as well. And, and um, this could be uh, the base uh, to have like a score system for peer reviews that are uh, being accepted within a certain threshold and uh, paid out uh, by an approver or in the future also automatically by the protocol via Lambda function. And um, yeah, so. Yeah, I yeah, hope. in particular, sorry. Yeah, in particular, regarding this uh, latest point mentioned by Nazareno, uh, there is a future development that uh, we kind of uh, briefly uh, mentioned in the presentation, which is the upvote, downvote. So the fact that the token itself uh, can be used to rank the peer reviews. And, um, and basically, in the sense, we could imagine uh, that we remove the approver that is needed for the bounty system. And instead, we have a system, as I said, that automatically approves a review based on uh, um, if a specific threshold uh, of votes is, is, uh, is passed. And regarding the status uh, that uh, you asked uh, about the validation, so if it means that once the, the peer review is validated, then uh, the article is directly published. 
Um, we have been considering several options. For now, the idea is kind of like uh, the ones that uh, I mentioned in the beginning of the presentation of the portable peer reviews, which is already adopted by some companies and some consortia, at least in neuroscience, for example, there is a big consortium uh, of journals that allow um, authors to have uh, the paper revised once and then to bring these reviews to other submissions such that uh, the, the time uh, scale of uh, peer review is, uh, is sped up, speeded up. And, um, and in a sense, we can imagine as a system that is decoupled from the journal uh, publication system. So it's kind of like having a preprint service, uh, like by archive archive, and then adding on top of it, the review process. So it doesn't mean that it's gonna be already published on a specific journal, although we, we are also considering maybe uh, a possible, uh, as a possible um, output to have uh, ANS review as an independent uh, open access journal, but this is still completely under discussion. Okay. I don't know if there is uh, there are some other questions. Uh, no. Okay. So I think that we can thanks also Bianca and Nazareno for your presentation. And uh, so I can uh, I would like to share my screen uh, with uh, just one slide to conclude. Uh, the workshop. Okay, uh, just uh, one slide uh, to remember uh, the next steps uh, to the authors. So the deadline for the final camera ready of the paper is September 25th. Uh, please uh, note uh, that there was an error in the notification email. So the right deadline is September 56, uh, 50, 25th. And uh, obviously you will receive an email from uh, the Europa organizer containing all uh, instruction, but uh, please uh, uh, make sure to uh, include all uh, suggestions, comments, uh, that uh, you received during uh, the workshop and also in the in the review in the reviews and uh, so the, and they prepare the final version uh, taking care of this uh, moreover we would like also to link slides and videos uh, into our website uh, the link uh, the address of the website uh, is in the top right corner of the slides uh, and uh, if you want to share the slides, uh, please uh, send uh, the file uh, to me. And also, if you disagree with the publication of uh, your YouTube video, please write us, okay? If, you, if we don't uh, receive an email, you will publish, we will publish uh, the, the YouTube uh, links in, in our uh, website. Uh, moreover, uh, to I would like also to ask uh, to the audience, not only to the authors, if you are uh, interested to join the program committee, again, write us. And uh, with this, we would like also to thank uh, all uh, Europa organization to give us the possibility to organize this workshop. And uh, I think uh, that's all. Thanks also to all presenters, uh, to all reviewers, uh, and uh, all members of the program committee. I don't know if Andrea wants to add something. Yes, I just want to say goodbye to everybody. As uh, Claudio said, if you are interested in, in uh, collaborating to what's um, FPT up, uh, feel free to, to contact us. Uh, uh, this is a, a, a thematic, uh, quite focused workshop that is slightly growing over the, the years. So we have had a, a small number of uh, editions, but 
uh, especially this year, uh, several talks were, were very interesting uh, and uh, I think it could grow even more. So thank you so much uh, and thank you for uh, adapting to this new format. We will see for how long we will need to be using it. Possibly we come back to, to in-person conferences as soon as possible. So thank you so much and see you next year and uh, get in touch if you have questions or proposal or ideas that you want to discuss. Goodbye. Bye-bye.